Hello fellas, or maybe crypto lovers. Today we are going to talk about one of the most important topics that the crypto industry would never live without. Yes, of course, we are going to talk about blockchain. The term blockchain has become known just recently, after a certain Satoshi Nakamoto showed how these technologies could be used to set up a new financial system. Thus, in 2008, Bitcoin appeared, and with it the history of blockchain development began. By 2021, the popularity of these technologies was so huge that the value of Bitcoin itself had already gone over $40,000 each. And if a major player like Tesla is interested in this phenomenon, why shouldn't simple users get involved in the technology? Let's settle once and for all about blockchain, a decentralized network, and cryptocurrency. Okay, long story short, blockchain is a secure way to store all data about transactions, contracts, and anything that needs to be recorded and verified. Thus, today, blockchain has engaged virtually every area of our lives, and this is far from the limit of its potential. What is the technology itself? There is a set of nodes organized into a peer-to-peer -peer network. The nodes exchange packets directly, without the mediation of a server like torrents. Each node keeps a list of all the transactions made over the lifetime of the network. These transactions are organized into lists between 200 and 300 transactions, called blocks. Blocks of transactions are linked in a chain. Each block contains a link to the previous block. Such a chain of blocks is stored on every node in the network. The consistency requirement must be met for all nodes. Namely, the chain of transaction blocks stored on the nodes must be the same for all nodes. Simply put, in order for the system to function, everyone must have the same transaction history, as it is the only source of information about how much currency each node has. If the history differed, it would be impossible to tell how much money a person has now, and the whole accounting system would collapse like a house of cards. The process of searching for blocks is called mining. Once the problem is solved, a new block is formed, and it can neither be deleted nor changed. But everyone on the internet is able to see all the information that is in the blockchain. As if you were piecing a puzzle on an online stream in front of an audience. So as you have understood, all blockchain data is open to all and at all times. It is easy to check them at any time, tracking changes in the information. How does it all work? Let us now explain. Transactions are encrypted using the public key principle. The scheme is as follows. Each node has a public and a private key. With a private key, a transaction can be encrypted in such a way that other users with the public key can read it, but cannot change it. Each node in the network has the public keys of all the other nodes and only its private key. According to this scheme, when I notify the network that I have transferred a token to another client, I encrypt the notification with my private key, put it in a transaction list, and send it to all the other nodes. In doing so, I can be sure that no one can change my message. It is important to understand that Bitcoins, as such, do not exist. There is only a transaction list. They have no physical or electronic essence, only a ledger and money transmission messages. So you can expect to find an intruder who wants to buy an item but hide that purchase from the rest of the network, and then buy another item. To understand how the Bitcoin developers solved this problem, let's look at how transaction verification works, which keeps the transaction history on all nodes consistent. To begin with, not all nodes are the same. There are nodes that simply redirect alerts through all possible paths, and there are nodes with large processor power that verify transactions. Such nodes, commonly referred to as miners, assemble incoming transactions into a block and solve a certain time-consuming mathematical problem using hash transactions. The first miner to solve this problem receives a new Bitcoin and spreads the verified blockchain of transactions throughout the network. Nodes in the network keep the chain. This means you don't have to guess about the authenticity of the information you're interested in. Verifying its identity is simple and accessible. We want to provide a clear example of how blockchain operates. Everyone knows how email works. Suppose that one letter is equal to one unit of money, and we can send this money to a particular person. Only, unlike email, we have a certain limit for letters, availability of money, and one letter we can send to only one recipient. After that, 
the limit of our emails will immediately reduce and information about the transfer will be recorded with both the sender and the receiver. All emails are safely protected. Information about the transaction can't be deleted or changed. In addition, it can be seen by all network users, recipients of your ebook. Easy, right? Let's return to the double buy problem. Suppose we have a malevolent miner who spent 300 bitcoins to buy a new car, but wants that transaction not to be registered in the blockchain so that he can buy another car later. Buying on the blockchain is done by notifying nodes, so our miner sends a message like I buy a car from Uncle Vasya for 300 bitcoins. However, to fool the system, he immediately starts processing a block of transactions that does not include buying a car. Unfortunately or fortunately, he does not succeed. Why? The reason is that his purchase was processed by other miners and packed into a block before he could do it himself. The system will take some time to detect the conflict for that. Two neighboring nodes must have mismatched data, like in the previous example. In this case, the node that has a shorter transaction blockchain than its neighbor will discard it and take the longer one and so on, until the network is fully consistent because the block in which the machine purchase is located will be processed earlier. It will be a longer chain than the block without the purchase. Accordingly, it will displace all the blocks that do not contain the purchase, and the coherence of the network will be restored. The next feature of blockchain is its decentralized nature. Do you know why? There is no authority that can prohibit operations or block access to the blockchain. No third party to approve the transfer of information is required. If we transfer money, we need bank confirmation. If we send property rights, we need a lawyer to be involved. Blockchain completely eliminates the need for a third-party trust, which is certainly attracting more and more people. Moreover, each person who wants to participate in the blockchain has his public key, with which he signs the transaction, as if locking in a key and writing send to Jane, and a private key, with which he can open the parcel that Vassi has sent him back. We told about keys, so there are two types of them. The public key is some phrase made up of numbers and symbols, available for all to see. To make an analogy with Bitcoin, a public key is a wallet number that can be sent to anyone to transfer funds. The private key is the most valuable. It is used to sign all transactions within a private wallet, and so it must be kept in a confidential place, like online banking passwords. For example, Jill and Anthony have wallets and private keys. Jill writes a message to Anthony like, Hello Anthony, encrypts it with Anthony's public key, and sends it to the network. Now, in order to read Jill's message, Anthony has to connect to the network, find the transaction addressed to him, decrypt it all with his private key, and read the message. Hello Anthony, I wish I had sent $100. Anything encrypted by the user's private key can be decrypted by anyone with his public key, but not open. So you can find out information about every transfer, every account transaction. The system is completely transparent, and at the same time it is anonymous, because no personal information about a person's keys, wallets and blocks do not store. For a long time Bitcoin has been associated with the blockchain, and yes, since 2008 Bitcoin appeared, and with it the history of blockchain development. But today, blockchain is no longer associated with Bitcoin and is becoming a technology in its own right, forming the basis for new software applications and systems. A lot of experts are confident that just as horse-drawn carriages gave way to automobiles, so blockchain is becoming the logical evolutionary extension of traditional accounting tools. In addition, while blockchain was once referred to as a data store, it is now becoming much more capable because it can also execute programs. Yes, as you understood, the virtue of Bitcoin is that it provides the basis for creating innovative approaches in finance and governance. Let's look at the concept of cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is a currency, the security of transactions of which is ensured by encryption and which operates independently of the banking system. Cryptocurrencies have the following advantages compared to regular currencies. We will explain four main advantages of crypto. Let's start with the first one, reduce costs of financial transactions. The cost reduction comes from the fact that in blockchain-based monetary systems, there is no need for a trusted person to validate the transaction. 
The latter is achieved by the fact that each participant in the system has full information about the other participants. It is virtually impossible to cheat, and its reliability is ensured by sophisticated mathematical algorithms, cryptography, and hashing. The first currency that operates according to this principle appeared in 2008 and was called Bitcoin. Now there are a number of other cryptocurrencies besides Bitcoin. Number 2. Resistance to Attacks Cryptocurrencies have no central point of vulnerability. Conventional currencies are operated by banks. Their servers with customer account information can be attacked. Cryptocurrency is more secure in this sense because information about all transactions is stored by each user of the system. It cannot be simply deleted or changed. Number three is less ability to control from the outside. The third feature is related to the fact that the functioning of the system is provided by its participants themselves. They provide software capacity in exchange for tokens payment, which is carried out in cryptocurrency. This means that the system is controlled only by its participants, not the bank, and therefore no government decree can roll back the system. And finally, number four, cryptocurrency can be used to build a decentralized autonomous organization. If you supplement a cryptocurrency with a set of rules for managing the organization, presented in the form of code, you can realize the idea of creating a decentralized autonomous organization, where all decisions are made collectively and all assets are distributed according to their contribution to the company. Blockchain is the basis for trading in all kinds of transactions, including cryptocurrency transactions. But why is the decentralization factor of blockchain so important? For example, the idea of backfeed. The idea behind backfeed is to use blockchains for collective self-governance. The protocol provides a voting function, takes into account different scenarios, and determines different user behaviors that lead to the most effective collaboration. It should be noted that the idea of a digital governance system is not new. The concept of governance as a service has existed before. However, in this article, I would like to focus on the Backfeed protocol, as it provides an original solution for collective self-management via blockchain. How does Backfeed work? As in a conventional blockchain, nodes have a certain number of tokens, so cryptocurrencies. In addition to tokens, nodes have a certain amount of authority. Tokens are used for economic transactions and authority matters in the decision-making process. A node with more authority will have more weight in a vote on an issue. How is authority calculated? Each time there is a vote, the authority of each node changes according to its correspondence to the majority of votes in the group. One of the advantages of backfeed, which is worth mentioning, is the possibility of effective cooperation between such systems. Unfortunately, this possibility has not been realized on the program level and remains at the level of mathematical model. In the DAO world, each organization is represented by a cluster of nodes, which autonomously work on decision-making and have their own economy. Nodes are represented in the form of a tree or oriented graph. To sum it up, we want to remind you once again that Bitcoin is not money. We used to think that Bitcoin is some kind of currency money. In fact, there is no concept of balance in blockchain. That's because blockchain is just a notebook. Bitcoin is neither gold nor money, but a generalized and successful example of decentralized networks where everyone can become a participant and monitor the fair execution of all events. The cost of such technologies cannot be considered justified or, on the contrary, insufficient. Here everything is like on the real stock market. If the product is good and really represents something, then the digital asset will increase in capitalization and value. If it is the other way around, the project is considered a failure. Of course, everything related to blockchain and coins is still a highly volatile instrument, which sometimes is beyond the control of even very tough market players. That's because most of the investments in this area are made by ordinary people, not professional players from Wall Street. And yet, despite the complexity and obscurity of some issues in this industry, many already understand the value, convenience, and security of decentralized technology. Every day there is news about how states are innovating in areas people are familiar with. With Bitcoin or any other project, decentralized technology will become an integral part of the life of modern structures. After all, people want to secure themselves from fraudsters, corruptors, 
They want to learn how to control their lives more than ever. And blockchain is the first and biggest step to this new system. That's all for today, friends. Thank you for watching and, of course, blockchain is a very complex topic. But nevertheless, we have tried to explain to you as simply as possible. Don't forget to like the video and see you soon.